What if an apocalyptic blackout happened tomorrow and you needed your phone always charged to stay connected with your family? Would it be possible to do it just by using a motor? According to science, it is. But I've never actually tried it myself. So I want you to join me in trying to figure out how to make this possible without using any type of instructions. Just the basic principles that I know as an engineer and a little bit of common sense. Maybe we'll succeed or maybe we'll blow up my phone. The first thing we need to understand so this whole project makes sense is why use a motor as a charger? Well, motors, specifically DC motors, are a type of device that transform electrical energy into mechanical work. In other words, if you apply a DC voltage across its terminals, you'll get it spinning. So by using that logic, if you did the opposite and manually rotated the motor shaft, then you should get a voltage across its terminals. And then that voltage is what you would use to charge your phone. That's the first thing we'll have to demonstrate to see if this project is feasible. I'll do this by spinning the motor by hand and checking if there is an output voltage using a multimeter. I attach a 3D printed fitting that I used for one of my short form videos just to help me grab the shaft easily. Okay, so we just want to see a number pop up on the multimeter screen because that means that a voltage is being produced. Okay, here we go. Oh, yep, that, that, that looks like a voltage to me. That's, that's good. The fact that we were able to obtain a voltage is no surprise because that's essentially how electric generators work. They are the opposite of DC motors because they convert mechanical work into electrical energy. Of course, people don't spin generators with their hands, but rather with a gas engine that's connected to the shaft. However, if the world becomes like the one from The Walking Dead, then you probably won't be able to find any gas to power the generator. That's why in this experiment, we're trying to figure out if it is possible to build one without using something like an engine. The minimum voltage that we want to produce is 5 volts because that's the standard that phones use for charging. The problem is that I will never be able to produce 5 volts if I'm spinning it by hand. That's extremely slow. So what's the solution? We need to create a speed multiplier using gears. And that's when the project starts to get even more fun because gears are such a simple yet incredibly useful mechanism. Just by stacking a few of them together we can multiply output torque or in our case output speed. I designed a really cool system that does this and this is how it works. First, we have this large gear with a handle, which we'll use to spin the system. It has five times the teeth of the smaller gear, meaning that for each full turn of the large gear, the small one will spin five times. So if we turn the large one at one revolution per second, then the small one will spin at five revolutions per second. Now, since the small gear is fused to another large gear that's five times bigger, and the motor is connected to the smaller gear, we multiply the speed again by five. So overall, the motor spins 25 times faster than the initial gear. Now, how do I know that this speed multiplier will help us reach 5 volts? Well, um, I actually don't. I just figured that that amount would help us reach fast enough velocities without breaking the system. Because the way we're bringing it to life is by 3D printing it. And while this is 3D printing, let me talk to you about something that I'm super happy about, which is today's sponsor. And the reason why I'm so excited is because the sponsor is none other than Arduino. As you guys might have noticed already, I love using Arduinos for my projects. Their amazing microcontroller boards have always allowed me to bring to life my crazy electronics inventions. And the best part is that their products and software are super easy to use, making them accessible to people of all skill levels. One of Arduino's newest releases though simplifies this process even more for people who want to get into the maker's world and are not sure where to start. This new release is called the Plug and Make Kit and it includes Arduino's main board, the Uno R4 Wi-Fi, as well as many sensors and components called Modulinos. This kit offers you the opportunity to learn electronics from the very basics of it. You don't need to solder or even be scared of burning anything because all the parts can be connected with the cables that come with it. I even use this kit to build my own smartphone a device that detects the temperature of my studio and turns on whenever it gets too hot. To make this, I first created a prototype using the Thermo Modulino. Its purpose was to alert the user when it got too hot by turning on LEDs and producing a sound with a buzzer. After that, I designed a fan, 3D printed it and make it work by using a DC motor to spin the blades and a relay to turn it on or off. As you could see, building this device was super straightforward using the plug and make kit. And you can also build many other projects just by going to its official website, which includes all the instructions and code you'll need to make them work. You can check it out in the link down below. So thank you Arduino for sending me this awesome kit. Okay, now that all the parts have been 3D printed, we can start assembling the speed multiplier. First, I glued the column that will hold the initial gear to the base. Then I connected that gear using a shaft. After that, I repeated the process to install the middle gears, which was column, gears and shaft. The difference is that this one has an extra column on the other end to hold them strongly. In this first stage, you can clearly see how the middle gears are spinning faster than the initial one, meaning that I haven't broken the laws of physics, for now. Next, I glued the base that holds the motor. And finally, I put the gear on the motor shaft and set the motor on the base. Oh, and I also put the handle on the initial gear. 
Well, it definitely looks good and it spins without breaking, which is the most important part. So now what I want to do is read the voltage output using a multimeter to see if we reached the five volts that we needed. I hope we did because I cannot take this apart anymore. I super glued everything. All right, here we go. Come on. That's not five. Yeah, we're producing about 2.5 volts, which is not good. I'm also gonna measure how much current we're producing just to see like what the total power output is. We're producing kind of like 500 milliamps, which is around 1.75 watts. And that's not good either. So as you might have noticed, my assumption of making a 1 uh, to 25 ratio speed multiplier was incorrect because it's not producing the amount of voltage that we want. The current is fine. You can charge a phone with 500 milliamps. It's going to be like slow charging, but still going to charge. But we're still not reaching the 5 volts. That's definitely a problem. So one thing that I didn't do before is reading the data sheet for this motor. And it is rated for 12 volts and it produces 12,000 rpm revolutions per minute and since voltage is proportional to revolutions per minute that means that we need to produce 5,000 rpm to reach 5 volts which is about 83 revolutions per second and we are only producing probably like 40. This shouldn't be too difficult to solve though because I just had a brilliant idea. If one motor produces half the power that we need then two motors Okay, so I 3D printed another base for the second motor as well as its own gear. I also added a space limiter for the initial gear because it was wobbling a lot and that was pissing me off. The two motors are connected in series, which means that the output voltage will increase. Because one of the basic laws of electric circuits says that when you connect power sources in series, the total voltage will be the sum of each individual one. So it doesn't matter if it is two batteries, two solar panels, or in this case, two DC motors. You can always increase the total voltage if you connect them in series. All right, let's see if my solution is correct. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> yeah, five volts, baby, let's go. I knew it. I haven't broken the laws of physics again. I connected our improvised electric generator to an LED so you can see how the electricity flows. <laughs> Dude, like this is so cool. Like I honestly cannot get tired of this. It's just like simple science. It's so satisfying when it actually works. So the last thing that we need to figure out before plugging the generator to the phone is how to stabilize the output. You might remember me saying that the motor needed to produce at least five volts because what I wanted to do at first is get a voltage higher than that, like seven volts, so we could connect a regulator and get a steady five volts at the output. However, since that's not the case, what we'll do is actually the opposite. We'll have to connect a voltage booster to get it from 4 volts, which is approximately what I'm getting when I'm not spinning the system in beast mode, to a steady 5 volts. So I'm gonna use this little buck converter to do that. These devices have variable outputs, which means that you have to set the voltage that you want using this potentiometer. Alright, I got everything ready, so let's see if we're getting a steady output. <laughs> this is beautiful. 5 volts, baby! Let's go! Okay, I hope that at this point, those five volts can actually charge my phone, okay? Like, for the sake of my sanity. All right, moment of truth. Please charge. Oh, let's fucking go! We did it! I don't know how long it's gonna take to charge. I cannot see it from here. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like put it a little bit to my side. Okay, it's gonna take... Hey, it's actually not bad at all. One hour and 44 minutes. You should be able to see it from the lock screen. Let's see. Yep, it's charging and in that tiny number over there, I hope you, you can see it, it says one hour and 44 minutes. I've used unauthorized chargers with that phone that said that it was gonna do it in about like five hours. My result is actually really good. And also I have no idea how it determined that that buck converter was a worthy charger. Like what the hell? Here's another angle, like just see how beautiful it is. Whew. Honestly, there is no better feeling than a project that has been successfully completed. So to answer the question, yes, you can charge a phone using a motor. Or well, in this case, 
two of them. However, you could do it with just one if you had a motor that produced higher voltages with less RPMs. Or if for some reason you have this exact same one, you could build a speed multiplier that produced at least 8,000 RPM and connected the output to a voltage regulator rather than a voltage booster. Not gonna lie, doing this experiment was really fun for me, so I hope you guys also enjoyed it. I literally went through every step doing what my problem solving wired brain told me to. Sometimes the solution works, some other times it's garbage. But that's the beauty of it. Anyways, see you guys in the next video.